Uh, <laughs> so trying out a new positioning for the camera. Still trying to figure this out. Um, yeah, okay, we're gonna go with this for right now. <laughs> So, uh, hey YouTube friends, it's Trish here, and welcome to my little corner of the internet. Today, I'm going to try to discuss the most recent episode of The Bachelorette's Rachel and Gabby season. Yes. Uh, this was part two of Fantasy Suites Week. Honestly, I watched it this morning and I've had some time since because that episode honestly stumped me and there were a few different happenings, I guess, that I was just like, what, what's hap what is going on? I don't still fully know. I just... <laughs> I decided to watch a recap because I was like, maybe someone else can help me understand what I'm thinking because that is an issue for me often, um, which I know makes no sense. But I think a lot of times I think in, in emotions rather than in words, and which is why confrontation is not my forte. I'm not really good at it because vocalizing what I'm feeling within is an issue. So having a YouTube channel <laughs> and wanting to sort of recap these things does make things interesting um, in that respect. But yeah, I think most times I can, I can figure it out, verbalize it, but yeah, this episode, um, I wasn't sure how to feel about certain things that happened. Namely, on Gabby's side, the things with Jason. And with Eric, but the Eric thing actually somewhat resolved itself in the beginning. Because uh, it, the this episode picked up where the last episode left off with them on the bridge talking. Actually, Gabby had walked away, so I thought that was the end of it, but she walks back and this is, I so relate to her on this because when you're in a confrontation sort of situation and you sort of feel your emotions start to bubble up and that's when you're really just feeling things and not able to articulate well, and for me, it's also, I hate crying in front of the person that's hurting me. <laughs> and so I need to walk away, have my cry, take time to myself to really just process what it is that's like, what's the root of the issue that's bothering me or bothering us in the situation that we're happening. And, um, and then I come back, usually I still end up crying, but at that point, it's it's fine. It's a little better because I think we can then discuss the situation. Um, so I, I think that Gabby is very much that way and it's nice to see that reflected. It's like, okay, um, like it happens, it's fine. Um, anyway, so at first I'm thinking, Oh, well, all this stuff with Eric is resolving quite nicely. She took time to herself, had her moment, came back, and was like, okay, you know, I... She doesn't believe that he meant anything bad intention-wise in putting her sort of on the spot over there. And... Again, I said in my video yesterday where I was like, I don't think that was his intention in coming over there and seeing her. I think it just sort of came up. Um, later on while I was watching some recaps and, and some people sort of brought up the, I always forget, which is so dumb because these shows are so heavily produced, but I forget the producer sometimes. 
and how they might be really uh, helping urge the sort of spinning that goes on and the contestants, you know, they don't have the internet to distract. They don't have apparently books. I don't know where I heard that <laughs> recently, but that I thought was a little strange. Wait, I'm not allowed to bring a book? <laughs> um, yeah. I do think that I believe him when he says like he just sort of regrets that he'd even brought it up and, and that the conversation did end up going there because that's not what he wanted to do and he's sort of realizing that oh my goodness she's in such a... <sighs> actually... something was bothering me this whole time and I just realized that I think it's because generally the camera's on this side, on the- I film on my phone. Um, looking at the wrong place now. I film on my phone. <laughs> so, it's a little better. My hair is just really loose. Anyway, I think that's a little better. Bear with me, I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so moving along from Eric, because the next part about Eric that stumps me is seeing, I guess, the preview. At least I think so. I don't think there was anything else in the episode, right? Where he popped up. Oh, when Gabby comes to talk to him. <laughs> when Gabby comes to talk to him, I am a little stumped over there, but that's not because of Eric. That's just... I'll get there. Um... Because before Eric, there's the whole Jason thing. I, uh... <laughs> I've been trying to process the whole Jason thing and think about how do I feel about it? Because it's a multitude of emotions. On the one hand, I totally get and recognize and understand that for him, it's very difficult in this position to really gauge what's real and what isn't. Totally get that. Um, he's definitely an overthinker. <sighs> what is annoying is this is sort of the end of the journey. Hold on, I gotta sneeze. Well, I did have to sneeze. I hate it when I have... Anyway, what bothered me is this is sort of the end of the journey. And I, in the middle of the season, when he had brought it up that he actually at one point was thinking he was going to go home, but he had his time with Gabby and was interested and then was sort of like, well, I... I I'd, kind of want to get to know her more so he sort of bucked it up and stayed on and I get that he hasn't had a full one-on-one -on -one time with her but he's had one-on-one -on -one moments with her throughout the episodes so for him to say, the comment that's sticking out to me is how he say, well, you don't really fully know me and I don't know who you are. And I get what he's saying over here. Cause uh, I mean, Jason was just poking holes in the whole show. The premise of the show is outlandish, uh, outlandish and insane but so addicting to watch but realistically logically in terms of having a steady healthy good relationship <laughs> committed relationship in that sort of way that requires time and not being put under scrutiny well by <laughs> the nation but also just 
in all of their moments, there's a few cameras, meaning there's also a few camera people, there's producers standing over there, there's lighting and speakers and blah 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 and all of that. It's not how generally a relationship goes and they're expected or encouraged to lead to an engagement at the end of it. When you hear that as the premise of the show, I mean, granted, now we have shows like Married at First Sight and, you know, whatever. So, but anyway, when you hear that as the premise of the show, you're just like, that's unreal. And doesn't have such a great track record, right? We are in double digits of seasons for The Bachelorette and, you know, that much more in the Bachelor fan franchise and though there are some relationships that have stood the test of time so far since their season airing, there's more relationships that don't and it's because then you're entering into an actual real well as real world as you can get because now you sort of also uh, have the fame of being on the show to deal with you get recognized when you go out and whatnot. So, you know, saying normal <laughs> is not really um, correct. Oh my God, what is up with the sun today? Will you please sneeze? I can feel it. It's always just like right at the edge and it's like, please do. Just go ahead. I'm okay. Just do it. I just might not post this. Also, my hair is just falling out of this. Okay. Yep, it's a lot of things. A lot of things that are being really annoying. Come on. difficult okay because I'm probably going to cut out a lot of what just happened just to sort of catch you up I was dealing with the direction of the blinds trying to figure it out the light is in and out because we're partly cloudy today although it's quite breezy now so I think rain might be coming along and my hair was really bugging me. <laughs> and that sneeze still hasn't happened. So this is what we're dealing with. Uh, again, I just, <laughs> I'm really not sure if I'm gonna be editing and posting this, but you, we're gonna go on and so that I have material in case I do. So anyway, <laughs> Where was I? What was I even talking about? We were talking about Jason. We were talking about why now? We were giving him space to like, you know, be an overthinker and feel his feelings. Anyway. Okay. So, Jason. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> now I'm just like, I just want to move past this. But no, no, no. It's, it's quite a large chunk of Gabby's story and this past episode and it's it's part of it that was sort of stumping me because it, it is a little bit of okay I understand and I get that you can't really trust your reality almost and trust your own feelings in this whole situation but that aside Maybe you've never seen the show before, but you've now been on it for some time, some weeks, been trekked around Europe and back. So, or back, never mind, because now you're in Mexico, but you, you know what I'm trying to get at? I mean, you get the premise of the show by now. She's handing out roses, dwindling down to the one for her from the group of guys that she started with and 
you're now one of three and you're still having those questions and concerns and if you're feeling like you can't trust your reality what makes you think that's going to change in the next week because he's right i mean everyone's right and engagement is a huge thing it sure is not I mean, engagements can break, but the idea is to go into it with the love and devotion and the understanding that neither of you want it to break. <laughs> and he can't trust that to move forward. Again, I get that, but why still be here then? because I doubt that that mindset is going to change in one week. Even if you're in a new tropical location, it's very romantic, it sort of sets the mood for that kind of stuff. You're not gonna trust that. And instead you're giving her the impression that you're in the same place as her in terms of how you view your relationship together and, and the projection that it's going towards because you're accepting her rose week by week and she i mean i just keep referring in my mind back to the last episode when she said goodbye to johnny and she's talking about like just the amount of love and affection she feels from Eric and Jason and she feels that sort of validation because of how they've been with each other so you know I think in my last video I was talking about how I was amazed to hear him say in the preview and I guess now in this episode when he's with Jesse that you know, he's not even really sure if he loves her. <laughs> and it's flabbergasting, basically, to be at the, at the point that they are at in this journey. And granted, I kind of, for some reason in my mind, I was like, oh, it's the finale. And it's not. I mean, there's still a bit to go I kind of forget that okay no what now it's they're gonna meet her family and and then she's gonna have last dates or well with her now she just has Eric but so there is still a bit to go but I just and granted Jason doesn't know everything that's going on she doesn't know that she's let Johnny go and but I don't think that that really matters <laughs> because we're talking about his relationship with her. It's just in that that it's a little surprising that he's feeling the way that he's feeling. And I mean, my heart just hurt when it's, <laughs> it's the morning after and I mean, <laughs> cameraman and editing, we have to show the dead fly and the half half <laughs> empty glass of champagne and the bed is pristine and still made and I was like okay TMI we don't need to know that but I get what they're going for it's clearly they just talked and things did not go well and we see Gabby and she's talking about how she's devastated and when you hear that they were both looking forward to having that private time with no cameras so that they could finally talk. Like this is what they needed. This is what he particularly needed to really express and to listen and to understand each other and to really be like, is this real? 
to hear that they finally had those conditions and they only talked in circles frustrates me and I wasn't even in the situation so to hear Gabby say that eventually she just got fed up and was going to leave and he said that okay so it's over now <laughs> I I'm like bravo to Gabby to just sort of cut it off like she's having her emotions she's feeling the heartbreak of of the dream that she was sort of putting together completely crumble and fall oh wow how poetic um <laughs> completely crumble and just fall apart I mean to then go to him the morning after and just be like okay but I want you to understand that you led me on because she's giving a rose week by week and you're accepting and that's telling her that you're there with her that you are feeling these deep emotions and you're also sort of wanting to build and grow upon that and maybe he was like i'm i don't want to completely take that away from him he wanted time to really suss out the emotions but he is such a logical <laughs> black and white thinker that he cannot get past what is real and what is just the environment that we're in which yeah I get but you are in this environment like this is how the show is and it almost would have been better had he said hey I like you I just don't think that we're at a level to get engaged but I'd like to continue and see where this goes which eventually is what Gabby was getting at if you could just tell me that this is something that you do see eventually getting to that point I almost feel like Gabby was fine with that and I mean she dropped in the night per portion in one of her ITMs that he was her lead guy, which I did not pick up on at all throughout the whole show. But inside, I was feeling that in like my ranking of him in terms of her guys, I wanted her to end up with Jason. Now I'm just sort of like, oh my God, <laughs> this just how Zach was talking about a 180. This was a 180 for me almost. I mean, I don't want to say that Jason's this horrible guy or whatever. I'm just, I'm a little frustrated with the whole situation. And there is a small part of it that, yeah, the blame is a little bit on Jason for this. Not just production and how the show goes and all of that working against them, which there is that as well, but there's also a little bit of it that's like, dude, <laughs> what? So, <laughs> anyway, um, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't know, um, but, you know, Gabby was just very much like, all right, well, this is, that's done, and we're moving on. Um, you know, what else is there to do or to say? It's just, cool. Well, thanks for that, and um, be on your way. <sighs> I don't want to... I can almost understand what the circles were that they were going in. It was him saying that he can't trust his emotions or even their emotions in this situation and whether it's real and her saying okay I get that but can you see like do you feel enough for me that you see this going to some sort of like it actually being a strong relationship in the outside world that could lead to an engagement. And he just can't see past that because he can't even trust his feelings now. 
to tell her that, oh my god, I, like, it's, it's so frustrating. It really is. Anyway, we're going to move past that because he's obviously gone and, and that's that. I mean, his poor mother is probably watching, the, if she is watching the show, because we got the sense that the mom and the sister might, you know, really be invested. Um, and she was crying and saying that she doesn't want him to overthink basically and get to a point where he lets go of this and he's going to be crushed later on don't know if that's what's happening right now but well yeah anyway so that was Jason's story and okay moving on to Sorry, I like noticed that the screen is dark over here, but I'm sure the lighting keeps going in and out and I'm really sorry about that. I don't really have lamps yet. <laughs> um, and the, the light, oh, the sun's coming out. But the light bulbs that the previous people put are fluorescent. Who puts fluorescent lighting in a bedroom? No, fluorescent lights are for laundry rooms only. And even then, I, do, I just I hate, fluorescent lights are grocery store lights. Like that's it, that's just grocery store lights. I don't think they have a place in a house. <laughs> and if they do, it's the laundry room and that's it. But there are fluorescent light bulbs in my bedroom and I refuse to turn on the light. <laughs> so I have one lamp, which is by, oh, I have two lamps now because I did set up one yet. Point is, I don't really have a standing lamp yet over here. So anyway, the sun came out. We're good now. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and move on to Rachel and the Zach situation because I mean, that was the, the only, yeah, because we saw her other two in yesterday's episode. So it was just a Zach fantasy suite date. Day portion, I was just thinking, wow, what a chipper, young, white couple. <laughs> I'm sorry to put it that way, but <laughs> they were just, um... And in a weird way, it was awkward for me to watch, but I'm like, you know what? Maybe that's just their vibe and that's just how they are. They are so happy-go-lucky and so optimistic and the way they talk and especially like the way he will say certain things and, and it's just like everything is sunshine and rainbows and <laughs> just, um, I'm glad we got to see some of those sort of fun, funny moments or whatever. Um, I, I think one of the clips was after the episode where she was talking about sort of really liking history, but not really being good at <laughs> remembering periods, which I kind of totally get from my architectural history classes. I will love some of these buildings, but not remember when <laughs> or even sometimes who. Uh, which is really terrible, but anyway, um, so I liked seeing some of that because otherwise I was just thinking, wow, is there anything even, and bland is not the word that I want to say, but you know how people say like, oh my goodness, they're so vanilla and so basic, which is still a personality trait, you know, which is why it's like, they're just... They're like whipped cream. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's very light and fluffy and airy and just sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> um, so anyway, they were just like having a hunky-dory day of a date. Um, really excited going into the nighttime portion. They're just, and then the morning after was, so awkward and watching it was so awkward 
it almost felt like Zach suddenly had the ick. <laughs> Which is so surprising because he was all gung-ho about Rachel this entire season. And he's over there like crying on their first date. They're having a moment. And then his fan, I mean like it, Rachel was his girl. I think in the nighttime portion he even said that like she's the future Mrs. I didn't catch the last name anyway. So I'm just like what happened? And he keeps on bringing up when he's talking about it by himself or when he's talking about it with Jesse. They mention um, politics and what else? I don't know. He mentions it in a list, but then ends it with the whole age thing and sticks on that being the issue. And that she started to completely act differently really asking about is he sure about this commitment because he's like what 25 or whatever and you know Rachel's just a few months older than him apparently so it is a little bit like <laughs> well you're ready why why would you think that I'm not ready um so there is a little bit of that and and you know maybe there's a little bit of a standing for Zach to be also honing in on that on how very different her conversation style ended up being when the cameras weren't around which you know that's a tad alarming um but I, I just don't think that that's the complete issue and I don't think we have the full story. I can't imagine that it's just about the age. And because we did hear about the whole politics comment, I don't know, I just sort of wonder, but also the way in the morning she was like, you know, we do understand each other, right? We're on the same page and you're okay. And then she's talking about how he handled it really well. Like they did have a a conversation and, but it was handled well. And I'm like, mm, what could, like, what could that be about? Because I do feel like something as polarizing as politics generally is not something that you can in one night get to some sort of understanding about if you don't believe in the same things right <laughs> right <laughs> you know and so so which is why i'm sort of like maybe politics has something about it or maybe it's something completely different only because of her saying the morning after that, you know, we came to an understanding and it's okay. Or he handled that well or whatever. I'm just like, mm, what is this about? Because <laughs> I don't think it's about age and I don't think it's about politics. Maybe it's a combination of a lot of things. But it also sounds like, no, it might be one specific thing. I just... I don't know that was weird suddenly he's with Jesse and he's crying about like oh where oh where did my Rachel go almost you know like she was just this completely different person and very focused and just honed in on are you sure you're ready for this which okay so now getting into a little bit of the preview talk and you know because this episode ends in somewhat of a cliffhanger actually before talking about the preview the other part of the episode that stumped me gabby then going to eric and having the conversation with him because i wasn't sure how she what was she going to say how she was going to handle it is she only sort of leaning towards Eric because he's her last option. 
but I do think that she does have genuine feelings over there. So how is this going to be navigated, so to say? And, you know, she does go and she talks about how she needed that one-on-one, -on -one, like that private one-on-one -on -one time with Jason to understand fully what it is that she deserves. Which I, like, I, I get that. Um, and basically saying that Eric provides what she wants. And so letting him know that he's the only one there now. And I don't know, like, it's so simple, but I don't, something about it just sort of, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Because on the one hand, okay, the morning after her time with Jason, she's going and sort of having that official closure, we are breaking up conversation. And she handled it very sort of judiciously and, and also sort of let him know that mm, you did do this, I want you to realize it, but I don't want you to apologize. It's not what I'm looking for. It's just for you, know this. I don't know if it just cut out or whatever. I just got a notification about my battery running low. I've also been talking for apparently 41. I granted other things have happened, but still not as long as I wanted this to be. Um, yeah, I just, I don't really know how to feel about that whole thing with Eric. But, you know, I think initially her, her issue with Eric was that it felt like he was now sort of pushing her hand to act a certain way where she wanted leave to make her own decisions for her best interest and their best interest as a couple. Just like, I'm on this journey, let me be on this journey. And, you know, they had their conversation to sort of resolve that. And then she went through everything she did with Jason and that had to be such a huge disappointment to her. I mean, she said she was devastated because Jason was her first pick. And, you know, you hear her making these comments of, you know, am I just unlovable or am I too broken for anyone to love me? Or it takes a, a special kind of person to know how to love me. And is that guy just not here? So you're hearing her say just all of these things and then she goes to Eric and just tells him, which is still true, which is why like, it's not that I, I'm not trusting or believing of that. It's just, I'm processing still, but you know, she tells him that I needed that private time with him to really fully understand what I personally needed and deserved. And now you're the the remaining guy. You're the last one standing sort of thing. I don't know, I just... Yeah. So I'm gonna leave that there. But Zach wanted to talk to Rachel before the rose ceremony. Jesse didn't set that up, so he had to sort of... Rach, can I speak with you before you hand out roses? <laughs> sort of situation. So hopefully we hear more about, okay, what, 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 what is it? What is it? Because it's not age and, and, and I don't think it was really politics either, though those two could be a factor, but what happened? <laughs> I'm so curious. Um, and Rachel clearly wants to sort of sweep it under the rug, whatever it is, and just be like, no, 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 we've come to an understanding, but Honey, you're the bachelorette. <laughs> like, I 
don't know. I don't know. But the preview shows us that Eric is also going to say that, hey, I really do like you, but I'm not ready to get engaged. So that is now the third guy in a row to tell her that. So I understand her being like, oh my God. <laughs> and then just leaving the balcony and, and walking off because for that to happen one after another after another, and she already has her insecurities about being loved and how she receives love and whatever and she just she really wants to find someone to love her for her I mean I mean, I want Gabby to remember that, sure, the show's premise is to end in an engagement, but you don't have to. This is your life. You know, like, that doesn't have to be this box that you check mark because you're the bachelorette. But at the same time, this is the third guy in a row. Three of the guys out of all of her guys that she felt the most for. I mean, she even said that Johnny will always have a piece of her. Like, she did have deep feelings over there. Obviously, she had deep feelings for Jason, and she does for Eric. So, for it to be just all of the guys that she was so invested in, to be like, yep, not ready for that. But hey, I like you. my heart goes out to her it really does and apparently next week is going to be a live viewing of that you know the final episode they're meeting families and oh boy um i don't know i mean i guess zach makes it past the next rose ceremony date because i think you know, she's talking to him in like a nighttime sort of situation, which generally I think happens after they meet the parents. So and next week we're going to have Gabby and Rachel there. So I'm sure they will have interjecting sort of studio times where they're talking to both ladies about, hey, how were you feeling in this situation that happened? I don't know, two, three months ago at this point. I just, oh my God. Yeah. So I just flabbergasted, dumbfounded. I don't really know what to think or to feel. I just, wow. <laughs> what an episode. So yeah, that was the part two of Fantasy Suites week. And I think it's going to be in parts, the finale as well, so. Yay. Good lord. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> I feel emotionally exhausted, and I'm just someone who's watching the show after the fact, you know, and coming over here to chat about it so I can't imagine them oi uh, yeah okay <sighs> thanks for watching uh please comment below I'd love to chat about this <laughs> um but you know just anyway yeah that's about it. <laughs> Toodles. I gotta edit this now. <laughs> <laughs> Toodles. Yeah.